Hey painting friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a painting of Delicate Arch and Arches National Park. This is a really popular spot to go watch the sunset because the sun just totally lights up the rock and creates this beautiful warm color. If you haven't been to Arches National Park yet, I definitely recommend you go visit. We are going to use acrylic paint today. You are welcome to use any brand of acrylic paint you'd like, but I'm going to be using my Liquitex soft bodied acrylics today. My colors are Mars Black, Yellow Oxide, Yellow Azo, Flesh Tint, Cadmium Free Red Light, Burnt Sienna, Ultramarine Blue, Light Blue Violet, Magenta, Burnt Umber, Thalo Blue, Titanium White, Bright Aqua Green, and Thalo Green. I also have a handful of brushes here, some water, and I have some napkins, uh, Viva paper towels that I use to clean off my brushes. And this is an 11 inch by 14 inch. This one's actually a linen panel. So there are cotton canvas panels and there are linen panels. So this one's linen. Uh, so it's gonna have a little different texture than your traditional uh, canvas panel, but should turn out very nicely. So we're gonna start by just thinning down this umber with some water and I'm using my uh, long bristled number two flat tip brush. And I'm just gonna sketch out the shape. I already put a little grid down here and I have a grid on my reference photo. Just gonna paint in the shape of this rock pretty quickly. This is a very detailed painting. There is a lot going on in this reference image that I'm using, um, but I'm gonna try to keep this to about an hour, which is gonna be a challenge for me. So we'll see how that turns out. just copying what I'm seeing in my reference photo and adding that to the painting. I'm trying to think about how far each little line comes from left to right on each grid, what the general shape of each feature is. This is all in shadow in there and up here, so it just comes right up. All right, got the general shape of that arch. And then we've got this point behind it. This uh, kind of is one of our horizon lines. There's a big valley right behind this slope here. I guess there's actually a valley right behind the arch. And then this is probably some light hitting something across that main valley. Got 
little bit of a... That line was in the wrong spot, but that's going to be easy to fix. <laughs> Got some background features I'm gonna get in here. Got a little other mountain in the background. And there's another set of mountains back here. Keep that one pretty simple. And then for clouds, I am gonna to start to kind of put the shapes of the clouds here. Gonna start with the sky. Working at the top, we're gonna use some thalo blue. Lots of thalo blue, and I'll use some bright aqua green in there too. Put that right at the top. Just go back and forth. blend in more bright aqua green and thalo green and white. It's going to be my next color down. Gonna blend that back up. some white with just some of those two greens. I'm gonna add that right here. Maybe a little more just thalo green. forth letting the blend in with the paint. Kind of covering up my clouds a little bit but I'm gonna come back to them. I could even throw some more little cirrusy type of clouds in here if we want like this. Now I'm taking some white, some yellow, and some flesh tint. We're gonna add this color right under the blue. Just going for that nice rainbow color transition. It's best to do this while your blue's still a little wet so you can blend it softly. Now 
I'm just gonna clean off my brush. Now we're just gonna take some white with some yellow and some oxide. One more yellow. And we're gonna put this right here. Lightening things up even more. Take some more yellow. I'm gonna add a little bit of red. More yellow and white. Blend that up. We got this nice, pretty, colorful sky starting to form there. And then we're going to blend some magenta with our white. Maybe a tiny bit of our light blue violet just to cool it down a little. We'll put this down here. Gonna kind of Go back and forth and let this blend into my other sky color. We're starting to get like some hazy little clouds in here. Gonna add a little more white, a little bit of flesh tint and cadmium red, cadmium free red. And those colors there. I'll blend in a little bit. All right, and then we can take more magenta, a little bit of ultramarine blue, a little bit of umber. Start to build up the saturation in these clouds. I'll take some red, white, yellow, flush tints. And this is kind of like our highlight. And I'm gonna switch to my round brush here. So small round tip brush me to get a little bit more of the textured look I'm going for, more of the puffy cloud texture. And then I'm getting the extra paint off my brush and kind of swirling out the edges a little just to soften it up. more highlights over here and more pink taking the extra paint off swirling it around blend blend it out take some more flesh tint you can build up the highlights even more and then you can add a little more ultramarine with your violet and some brown. A little more ultramarine. And I can darken your shadows. It's really dark. It's going to blend that a little bit. Or just add more magenta and a little bit of white, and that'll make it a little less extreme. Just starting to add some more. Little shadows in our clouds. All right, then up here we got lots more magenta and light blue violet. Add a little bit of red in there and some brown. And that's a pretty good color for this cloud. Just 
kind of swirling the brush around. Got a little bit more magenta here. These are just kind of like the shadows first, and we're going to build up some highlights after that. Take a little more light blue. This brush has um, pretty stiff bristles, so you can kind of see it's really scratching the surface. And I'm going to have to go back with another layer of pigment in there because the paint brush is kind of scratching some of the paint out instead of just pushing it around and pushing it into the painting like I want. Get a little bit of red. Yeah, we can just add a couple of these little little guys. Just kind of hold in the brush so I can push more paint around. I'll take more white, a little bit more magenta, and Umber, build this up a little more here. Just lightly pressing here, doing some swirls to get the texture build up. And let's make this one a little bit lighter too. I guess. Take some more magenta, flesh tint, and our red, our yellow, white. Start building up more color. Just put a little paint down and swirl it around. I really love round tip brushes for clouds. They do a great job at getting getting the nice swirly cloud texture. Get some more flesh tint. to this one with our magenta blue just darken it up a little more build up some more pigment and texture let's let these swirl around in here Okay, I'm going to leave this guy for now and we're going to switch to the art. Actually, we're going to switch to the background. Things farthest in the background. So I'm going to start back here. We're going to take some phthalo blue with some magenta and some umber. Take a little bit of burnt sienna. And I'm just going to add these little hill slope mountain things. Just some mountains really far off in the distance. I'm gonna take some white, a little bit of flesh tint and oxide. 
and there's a little bit of snow or something on here I'm just gonna add a little very lightly pressing adding a little bit of brushwork in there so it looks like I painted in the snow on the mountain so it looks like I painted in the snow on the mountain and then we're gonna add some flash tint still got some blue kind of mixed in there this color is pretty close to the sky actually maybe it's like a sandy area or something back here now we've got more blue Add a little black in there. And let's add some red. Some blue. And there's just something kind of in the front here. Got a little bit more of this lighter color in here take my oxide and my red gonna add a little bit of that there and there's a little bit more of this brighter color right here Take some ultramarine and black. Just darken this a little bit more in there. All right, and then we need more ultramarine and black, and some phthalo green, and some umber, and some magenta. And I'm going to blend a little flesh tint in here just to lighten this up. So it's not so dark. But you still want it to be darker than what you put down in the background. So I'm sketching my little line in here first. And you can add a little bit more red if you want to add a little red in there too. Not too much like I just did. <laughs> And I'm going to go back with my blue and just fill this all in. Got a little bit of white, light blue, violet, and black. Some ultramarine for down here. A little bit lighter value. The base. And it kind of comes, you got a couple little valleys visible in here too. So I'm just kind of starting at the bottom and bringing that up, that lighter color. And over here, I'm going to take some more red. There's one section here that's kind of catching the sunlight still. And then it turns into like a purpley color. I'm just going to make by mixing my red, phthalo blue, and magenta. And what else? Kind of turns this color down here. Let's go back to our blue for up here. Just lots of ultramarine. And then we also can start to see a little bit of the like rock bedding back here. And we've got some shadows in there. 
Don't want to go too crazy with detail back here because I am trying to keep this one under an hour. Or at an hour. <laughs> That's the challenge for me today. Take a little more blue. Yeah, we can make some more of these blues in here. A little bit of brown up here. Some flesh tints. Start to get a little bit of these rock beds. And a little too light. Just trying to get a couple of these little angles in here without leaving those streaks. purple in there. Back to our lighter color. And I'm going to get a little bit more of my flush tint. Thread. Just add a little bit in here. There's some spots where the sun's reaching. Especially over here. I'm going to add more magenta. Or um, not magenta, flush tint and red. Put a line right there. This angled brush is great for getting nice lines. Then we got more shadows. So I'm gonna mix my blue with my umber and magenta. Put this in here. And there's kind of like a shadow within the shadow. I'm gonna use my light blue violet or a highlight within the shadow my bad just gets a little bit lighter right in there and then everything down here is going to be black with our ultramarine let's make it a really dark filling in all the space good and this is where we'll take that light blue violet and you can start to see some little shrubs or something hiding in here just kind of blending it in with my wet paint so it's not too noticeable or standing out too much And then over here, we've got a little bit more of a highlight on our ridge there and right there. Got like a rock chilling over here. It's got a lot of red and yellow. Another little rock in there. Couple of little things back there helping us to build our scene. 
All right, looking good. Now we're gonna start working on this guy. So I'm gonna use lots of my burnt sienna. Gonna blend that with my umber and some magenta. I feel like that's a good base color for over here. Still trying to be kind of careful to get the right shape. Then we're just taking brown, red, and blue. This deep shadow right in here. Got another deep shadow right in there somewhere. And while we're at it, we got another deeper shadow over here. And down here, got another really deep shadow. Go back to our red, red and blue. Just mixing some red and orange with the other colors and a little bit of flesh tint with the other colors that I had. And take some magenta. A color that I wish I put on my palette is dioxazane purple. I forgot. <laughs> I have, um, I ran out of dioxazane purple in my Liquitex soft body paints. So I've been using that color from a different brand and then I totally forgot I had it. But I can make do without it. But if you have it, dioxazine purple, dioxazine purple, uh, it will make some of this painting a little bit easier for you. It's a really great color for the deep shadows. Just taking some black in here now and starting to build up more shadows. I'm gonna go back to my brown. Mix a little bit of light blue violet in there. For over here. And I'll just take some straight up burnt umber over here. Mix some black, white, magenta, and red. Add some light blue violet. Got a little shadow right in here. 
And her hair too. Gonna finish the shadows on this side of the rock structure. And there's a little bit more of this color up here. More light blue violet. Over here too. Going back to add some more blue. It's pretty dark up here. Gonna make it pretty dark for now and then we're gonna come back with highlights for this section. At the top. So easy to get caught up on all the details going on in this rock. Mixing my, um, what I just mix, my red with my light blue violet and my yellow oxide. Mix a little more light blue violet in there. And make some more red and yellow. This here. More magenta. Take a more brown for right here. Cut this rock comes down like that. A shadow right there. Gotta bring this rock over a little bit more. Just outlining again. Cause everything over there is pretty bright. So we got red, yellow, and flush tint, and oxide, and white. Mix some more yellow. It's pretty close to what I want. Put that right there. And I'm take some more yellow. All right, let me grab these colors again. There we go. That's a highlight color. Gonna blend this a little bit, add some of the highlights that are up here, the top. Just use straight red too.
bringing this color down, covering up my liner that I had there, adding more highlight. Take some more red, blend this in here, our shadows, these colors. Got more red kind of hiding in here. Still trying to show the rock sandstone layers. Let's come back over here. Do it a little bit lighter, like more magenta -y color in here. back to a red. Red and brown. Got some up and down. I'll take more magenta, some black. Just add a little bit of that in here. It's kind of dark. little shadows from the sandstone. Now over here, let's take more of our brown. Getting those shadows in there, here, pull them down. This is all kind of a shadow there. It's a shadow, a little shadow there. All right, that's looking good. Uh, I'm gonna work on moving down, taking more red, yellow, flesh tint. More red. 
And I'm just gonna add this here. Got about 15 minutes left on my one hour <laughs> time. I haven't been talking as much because I've been thinking about that. <laughs> Trying to work quickly. Let's take these shadows right here. And more magenta and light blue violet with the red. And some white. A little more red. It's a pretty good color. Whoop. A little more white. It's a pretty good color for this. Take some more red right here, just put that in there, a little bit of brown, magenta. One more brown over here. And we got our bright color here. Red and white, yellows. Our red. Covering up all this space, I'll take just some red for the bottom. Mix a little bit of orange in there. Maybe mix a little bit more of burnt sienna. Okay, then we need our blue, with our red, for this shadow in here. And we kind of got some more shadows starting to form there. I'm gonna take some brown. And these ones just kind of fade into the other colors. Take some black with my red and just start to add some more little features, quickly moving the brush around. touch-ups here I see I need to do. Just to the shapes. With my yellow and orange. Add some more highlights here.
Alright, let's take some more magenta, light blue violet. Just touch up. One more light blue violet. Just add a little bit more of the shadowy blues that we're getting in here. Not a whole lot of blue down there. Some in here. What else? Not a whole lot more. I'm just going to use my brown and touch up some more of these shadows and then I'm pretty much happy enough to call it finished pretty soon. Trying to keep those lines in it. One more white. some more sienna above these. Still gotta add this rock bedding though. Make some blue, darken this one up. Call that a finished painting. Thanks for watching. I know this tutorial uh, was pretty quick and I didn't 
go into a lot of explanation because I was kind of worrying about my time limit that I gave myself. Um, but I hope you still enjoyed watching this one. And if you recreate this painting, you can post it on Instagram and tag me, Steph Maraca Fine Art. And if you guys have ideas for future painting tutorials, then you can leave a comment below this video or message me on Instagram. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and happy painting. Bye-bye.